Good morning, Baton Rouge. It's certainly a pleasure to be with you this morning. My task is for the next uh, five to ten minutes, uh, maybe thirty, no, five to ten, share a few tidbits about leadership. So to all the distinguished officials here today, all the guests, and most of all to the class of 2019 leadership, I applaud you this morning having been selected for this program. Some 25 years ago, I sat in the very seats you're sitting in, anxiously anticipating what lie ahead. And I can tell you, it was an experience that I carry with me to this day. Although we don't have the numbers that the class of 2018 have here this morning, the class of uh, 1994 is still alive and well around Baton Rouge. But truly, it's an experience you never forget. So we're here to talk about leadership this morning. Since we're here to do that, let's ask the question, what is leadership? Now you know that if you do a careful research, there are thousands upon thousands of explanation of what leadership is. This morning, I'd like to just share my thought on leadership from the perspective that leadership is the ability to gather a group of individuals to accomplish a task or goal in such a way that each member of that organization strength and weaknesses are used in that effort. Now think about that for a minute. Leadership is not going out there taking upon ourselves to be a one-person show. It's not going out there from a perspective of picking and choosing certain individuals but it's going out there looking at the collective whole of whatever you're part of, trying to utilize each and every part of that whole to get the greater good. Leadership is not about the titles we carry. When I looked at your class, you have some significant titles. A lot of directors, a lot of executive vice presidents, a lot of managers, a lot of other titles. But you know what? Leadership is not about the title. It's about the person wearing it and what they do in order to make that organization better than they found it. I'd like to share with you three key points of leadership that I think will help you along the way. Those three points are integrity, intelligence, and inspiration. Let's break these down for just a minute. Integrity, you heard, is doing what's right when even no one is looking. It's being consistent. It's being reliable. The people that you will lead, the groups that you will participate in, look for a constant. Look for someone who's going to be the same always. Now, part of that integrity is, and here's a hard one when you're leading people, is telling people not what they want to hear, but what they need to hear. And that's so very important. I worked in an organization that misled a lot of people, telling them, filling them up with what they wanted to hear, while never taking the time to constructively coach them as to how they could get better and the whole organization get better. So as you employ integrity in your leadership, please keep that in mind. Always be truthful and honest with people, not in an abrasive way, but in a coaching way to kind of get them to the next step. Very important. Uh, one example of integrity that floods my mind is John McCain. In 2010, when he was running for office, and they brought him all this smear campaign down up there against his uh, opponent, he chose not to use it. He took the high road, basing himself on if he won, he would win on his own merits. Something to think about. So when you're out there leading, there might be a way that seems right. There might be some shortcuts and some dark clouds that you want to hide behind, but I beg you not to do that. Always take the high road and employ integrity as you walk down your road of leadership. Secondly, intelligence. Now, when we talk intelligence here, we're not talking about graduating from an Ivy League school as soon as we But what we're talking about is make sure you gather the facts and research before you make decisions so you can make well-informed decisions. So often decisions have been made on hunches, uh, off the cuff, Never taking the time to research and be sure that you have the right answer. It goes back to my point about using everyone in your organization. If you're looking at a specific subject matter and you have someone in your organization 
who's an expert, who has a lot of research and knowledge, utilize that person to be sure you bring their thoughts into your decision. It's so important that we gather all the facts. When I think about intelligence, one in uh, the history buff, but one of the things I looked at, you all may have heard this guy, General George Armstrong Custer, at the Battle of the Little Big Horn. So Custer was a little cocky, and he wanted to be promoted to general. So he decided to take 126 men to fight Sid Bull. Okay, knowing that he had resources and reinforcements coming back, he thought he had the numbers. Well, the numbers was much greater than he thought, and we know the rest of the story. So this is how important getting all the information and having intelligence to lead is. It could be the matter of life and death. Uh, in my days in Iraq, we, uh, we had to depend on daily reports to know where the enemy was, where the SCUD missiles was, and you didn't take no trips out there on the countryside if you know SCUD missiles was flying around. But you had to have that intelligence. Last but not least, inspiration. Inspiration is so important to a leader until when everyone else is down, they're looking for you to pick them up. Okay? And sometimes it's hard. Inspiration includes getting people to do what they don't want to do. Now, I know you're looking at me and saying, Douglas, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. That's true. But you can hook a plow up to him and make him thirsty, <laughs> such that he wants to drink. And as a leader, that's your task. Hook plows of desire up to people. Find out those things they like. And before you know it, you will have them doing things that you never thought you could get them to do. People like their names. People like being given awards. People like comments. That's very important. The great guru of leadership, John Maxwell, said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. When you put compassion and inspiration into your leadership, you will bring people with you. An example I'll share of that is my own example. When I went to Iraq and I had all those people under me, this was an awesome responsibility. But something that you don't typically see on TV is that we had Red Cross visits where somebody's son died, somebody's mother died. During my tenure, we lost two moms, one dad, two brothers, and a son. That meant I had to send someone to that soldier to tell them that. And here they are, 2,000 plus miles away from home. So I didn't send no one. I went. And some nights it was sitting up there all night just listening to that soldier. But you know what? That soldier was left with the feeling that someone cared. And his leader had compassion. So important. So learn more about those people that you need and they live in prayer there. Learn about their children. Learn about their desires. Learn about their family. That's so important. And it draws people to you like you wouldn't believe. So there you have it. Three tidbits. Integrity, intelligence, and inspiration. Please carry those in your suitcases as you travel the road of leadership. And finally, as a leader, as a citizen of Baton Rouge, and as a person, I challenge you to always have a heart that sees the best in people, a mind that forgets the worst, and a soul that never loses faith in God. Thank you.